Hey everyone, welcome back to Mama Genius Pop Podcast. We have yet another wonderful um, guest in front of me. Amanda is about to join us. Now, I really love her topic because a lot of times we're always talking about how do we help our kids regulate our emotions. She's going to come up here and help us moms get back into our bodies. How do we regulate ourselves? Especially, I'm, I'm sure we're going to talk about this. When your kids start to push those buttons, what do we do? Because again, we got to remember we are the adults, but sometimes it's not that easy. So we're going to bring a man on to help us with that. And we're going to go ahead and get started. Welcome to Mama Genius Pub Podcast, where we support moms with big dreams from entrepreneurship to personal aspirations. I'm your host, Michelle Kaiser, and I'm here to help you unlock your potential in all areas of life. Join us as we explore strategies for thriving in motherhood while pursuing the dreams, the key to actually unlocking your genius. Subscribe now and embark on a journey to realize your fullest potential. Again, we're going to have Amanda Curry is a trauma-informed doctor of physical therapy, certified oncologist specialist, training cap for the soul. I love that. Master facilitator, breathwork facilitator, and inner child and re-parenting coach. She is passionate about helping parents, especially moms, learn how to process their emotions, allowing them to be more present for their children and reduce the reactivity when overwhelm sets in. Using somatic tools like breath work, um, felt sense and inner child re reparenting techniques, Amanda guides individuals in uncovering root beliefs that keep them stuck in overwhelm and frustration. She creates a safe, compassionate space for deep emotional, emotional work, honoring each person's journey. That is so important because we are all on our own. So remember moms, it's all about your journey, not what the other person next to you is doing. You got this. And going into her own pace to bring healing to them, parts of themselves that have been neglected. Welcome to the stage, Amanda. I'm so excited to have you here today. Hi. Hi, hi, hi. So happy to be here. Well, I just love to dive right in. And I, what is your why behind wanting to help moms with their emotional um, regulation? Um, more than anything, it's really about providing a space um, that I didn't have as a, as a new mom, as a, a young mom. And it's really about um, being able to support women in really just vulnerably speaking situations, just like we had 10 minutes ago where we were having tech issues. Um, and there was frustration, there was realness to the situation. And a lot of times um, we don't know how to handle that because no one's ever taught us how to handle that or how to support ourselves through those moments. And so I know that I wasn't ever taught that. And I know that a lot of adults out there are walking around uh, in a space of autopilot, uh, not because they choose to be disconnected, but because that's all really that's been modeled and taught to them. And so really I'm here as a conduit of my own support um, that I needed back in the day, but also really just to empower women in whatever you've experienced. Um, really just to be in full ownership and have radical responsibility for what's coming up in your day to day. I, I, I love that so much. And, and yeah, right before we got on, we were, we actually spent the first 10 minutes in the green room, just like, can you hear me? Can you hear me? You know, that whole Verizon call, we're like, nope, nope, nope. And, yep. and we go through those same things with our kids throughout the day is, is when, when they're having their issues and, and we're, you know, if it always comes back to you, like, how are you taking care of yourself and, and how you're regulating? But I love that you're focusing on that as well. And I loved how you put, like, a lot of us just don't know better because we just put this autoplay on in ourselves and, and how we, we do those things without even realizing it. So yeah. what is that first step to break that pattern? Oh, Lord, that's a that's a very loaded question. Um I love to bring would, those up. <laughs> right. Um, I, I love that you're bringing that up. I really think first and foremost, it's about coming back to connection with yourself. Um, by autopilot, that can look a lot of different ways for a lot of different people. And autopilot to me is you being in a sustained uh, nervous system response. So your typical fight, uh, flight, freeze, fawn, or flop. And a lot of people, you've probably heard those terms, but I really encourage people to get to know their specific response that they normally um, operate from when they're in pattern um, or that they may have been in for months, years, decades. Uh, Cause that says a lot about where you're currently at. And a lot of people, their autopilot, their free state, their fight state is their baseline. So they don't know anything differently than just to always fight or just to always leave the situation or just to always dissociate. And so I think first and foremost, when you are connected to yourself, you have more data points of, 
what's actually going on um, in the form of first, usually, how am I disconnecting from the situation? And then as the connections start to come online, what are the sensations that are present in my body? And what are those representing? During our tech fiasco, I felt a lot of like tension in my jaw. I thought I, I thought I felt a lot of um, really just generalized heat and energy up in my mm -hmm. upper half. Um, and my, um, I noticed that my pattern came on of wanting to fight, like wanting to defend, wanting to like lash out at the computer. And so it's not that I am now always in that fight response. That was something that I realized that I was in for many years um, prior to this work. Now it's, it's the noticing when I'm going in and out of that response or that pattern, because this work, um, any work, if you are told that it's going to wave a magic wand and create butterflies and unicorns in your life, run. <laughs> because that, especially for moms, is is literally not possible. And if you're told that it is, that's a red flag for me. Um, what this is doing is amongst or amidst the chaos, it's allowing you to respond and remain flexible and resilient in your environment, in the things that are coming up for you day to day. Ooh, I love that. I'm going to have to, I'm writing that down because right the response of being flexible in your environment. And actually, as you were talking, I never really thought about it. Like I've heard, you know, and, and I've known the fight flight and everything, but as you were talking, I, I like, I realized that my go-to is flight. Like I, and, and I, even as we're having tech, my thought was like, well, do we need to reschedule? Right. Do, <laughs> like, we leave? Like, do we leave? Yeah. Do we leave? Like, like, yeah. is this just not going to work out today? Like, we'll just reschedule. Like that was my yeah. first, I didn't realize it until you said that. And, and, and that is generally like, I don't necessarily want to have that conversation or, or like my first is like, let me go like calm down. And like my kids are pushing my buns. I just like go right up to my bedroom. And then as soon as I'm calm, I'll go back down. But yeah, I didn't, I never really put that in terms of like my first reaction is just get me away from the situation. Yeah, and it is and to recognize that. Yeah. And it's, it's something that a lot of times in books and, um, you know, on podcasts, they talk about in response to really big T trauma or any sort of like major stress response, but literally standing in line for the, you know, to check out at the grocery store that can create a response in your system. And so whether you subscribe to more of these nervous system responses or a way that I um, support my clients is through digging into what their personality pattern is, um, which is based on the book that Stephen Kessler um, created and has put out. Um, it, it really, it, really the identification of where you're at um, in the present moment is going to allow you a conduit to the deeper layers of what's really going on and why you're showing up the way that you're showing up. I love that. How like sometimes we, we don't even realize the things that we're doing. And it is like, just when you start to recognize that pattern, just as you were talking, like, I mean, I, 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 I addressed it and I don't always fly from, from the tradition, but like just having these conversations right now, I'm like, wow, that is my first response is flight. Now that I'm aware of that, it, like you said, when you start to, what, what feelings come up, my like first thing was like with the tech thing, let's leave the room. Let's, let's reschedule. Let's, let's go do this. And, and, yeah, and yeah. it's good to recognize those patterns. And I love how you go back to the, to discovering the personality pattern. So how do we, um, are there certain patterns or, or is it something that um, is more involved in learning or is that something you can um, explain to us? <laughs> yeah. Um, really besides the body keeps the score, the first two books that I ever recommend for my uh, clients is, book. um, is the personality patterns, the five personality patterns by Stephen Kessler. And it is um, an incredibly comprehensive book. Um, and it's not only helpful for yourself, but it also gives light to people that you surround yourself with, whether that be family, friends, coworkers. And just the, the long and short of it is that you primarily have a, um, or you have a primary and a secondary pattern. And they're loosely can, you know, it's merging, leaving, enduring, aggressive and rigid. And you could, you could loosely kind of tie each one of those maybe to like, is it a fight? Is it a flight? Is it a flea? You know, is it whatever? Um, but really it's based on more of a focus of the need. So if, um, for instance, my primary pattern is rigid and my secondary is aggressive, um, what's the need for a rigid pattern individual? Oh, well, they create structure um, to feel safe. They need predictability. There needs to be um, some consistency. And so it, for me, it's not just like, oh, you're in pattern. It also gives you a way to look into what's the need there to bring you back to presence and safety so that you very quickly get out of that pattern. And where some of the other, whether it's Enneagrams or Myers-Briggs or, uh, you know, the stress yeah. responses, it's not giving you a lot of now what? And that's what I really love about this book. 
Can you repeat the five one more time? Uh -huh. It's rigid, aggressive, enduring, leaving, and merging. A lot of moms will find that they may not always be prior to motherhood merging, um, but a flavor of merging is something called merging compensated. And it's a lot of like, my worth is tied to my doing and I give of myself and I give of myself and I give of myself. And then when I get into pattern, it's all, I do so much for you and no one does anything for me. So I don't, I, I mean, there are times where I can dip my toe in that. And I think the majority of these patterns are based on what you experience as a small child or even before you were born. Um, but I do find that situationally, especially for moms, there is some of these patterns that um, really develop or become heightened when we become moms, just in the nature of what we're doing. And we'll dive right into that right after this. Attention mompreneurs. Do you feel like you're constantly juggling the responsibilities without a moment to yourself? It's time to pause and reflect with our Mama Genius quiz. Tailored for busy mamas like you, this quiz will help you identify what's blocking your path and inspire you to harness your unique strengths, transform how you manage life and business, find your rhythm, and ignite your joy. Visit mamageniushub.com today to discover your mama genius. And that's mamageniushub.com. I love how you brought that into motherhood and how the merging comes in because it is so true that we, we then put into Meyer Dome and we're like we're doing, doing, doing. And then all of a sudden you have that feeling of like, yeah, no one's doing anything for me. But then even if they do do something for you, you're like, it's hard to even receive that. At right. least that's how I feel. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. We're, and that's kind of the, I didn't dive into that in your initial question, but after you notice the stress response and you notice sensation, the next thing is, can you, can you identify the story and then detach yourself from the story? So the story of the sensations that were present for me with the tech issues is that like, this is too complicated. Why is this so hard? Why does technology never work? I'm not good at technology, whatever it is. So it's, you can notice the story along with noticing the sensation, but you don't get overtaken by the storm and the wave of the story, because that's really what elevate, elevates us and sends us into a place where we're not productive, we're not present, and we really can't connect to what the real need is, right? So what I really needed is for my husband to be here and to help, <laughs> because I did, I wasn't resourced to be able to figure it out myself. But, but you did. Not, right, but that's not possible right now. So if I were to get swept away with the story of, I need help, this is too hard, then we probably would have been like, oh yeah, we should reschedule. And of course, the ability for me to be with the sensations and the stories allowed me to watch the wave crash, let it do its thing, and then be like, okay, we got this. This is fine. And so the same thing is true for doing, doing, doing. What's the story that's attached to your overwhelm and your reactivity? I have to do it all myself. I'm the only one that can do it. My partner doesn't know how to do it. He's not going to do it right. He's not going to do it quick enough. The kids aren't going to like how he does it. All of these are stories. And we choose to take on those stories. Um, and we also get to choose to identify the stories and detach from them or look at, is this even my energy of the story? Or is this what I watched mom and dad play out however many years ago? So yeah, it's it's definitely there layer upon layer upon layer that you get to traverse as um, your nervous system has the capacity to do so. And I love that. And I love that you brought up the body heap of score as well, because it is your nervous system like collecting all of this. And now as adults, as moms, sometimes it is the deep work to, to unpack these layers. And that's why the, why this podcast even exists. Part of it is because it, it's better to do it together and in mm -hmm. community and to really come together and, and learn from, I mean, that's why Amanda's here is like, we can learn from her expertise and her story so that you're not having to start from ground zero. And I think that's when we get so overwhelmed as moms is thinking, well, now I got to go figure this all out. Yeah. No, the whole point is find the resources that speak to you at this yeah. moment to where you're at. And really Absolutely. getting in touch with your intuition. And that's what I'm all about. It's really making sure that we're listening to what do I, like you said, like, what do I need right now? And what is going to help me move forward in my own journey? Because we're all so different. Yeah, you took the words right out of my mouth, because something that is a, a underlying and emerging passion of mine is connecting women back to their intuition. Um, I had a master or excuse me, mm, had a roundtable discussion last night. And the reason why um, one for like, 
colonialist jargon, it felt good in my system to switch it from a masterclass to a roundtable. But what I also um, realized is that the energy of a roundtable is that participation. An energy of a roundtable is for you to be able to take this in, um, leave what doesn't serve you, and then take on what does feel like it resonates for you. And so much, I cannot tell you that as this, this lens of intuition and the importance of it has come online, I've noticed and been really, really heightened to all the places that we give our power away, all the mm-hmm. places where we need to, this is this is the foods that they're supposed to eat. This is the time that they're supposed to go to bed. This is the amount of screen time that they're supposed to have. We did a panel discussion with um, a group of moms week, and, week or two weeks ago on screen use and on the book, The Anxious Generation. And what I told them is if you learn nothing else tonight, my portion of being on this panel is for you to go back to your intuition. I may completely eliminate screens screens from my house, but you may feel like, you know what, we're just going to use the big screen TV. We're not going to use actual iPads. And there is nothing wrong with either of our choices. So really, really, really love that you brought up intuition and the power of that and that we want to re-empower and re-engage that um, in everybody's lives, not just ours, but in the people that are listening and the people that we have conversations with that are like, I don't know what to do. What's the right thing? No, there is no right or wrong. There is just what is. There is what works well for you and what works well for each one of your kids and your family as a whole. Like every situation is different. And that's why we as mothers have to get back into our intuition. I love that you bring up the idea of like the round table because I call them women's circles, but it is the idea of us sitting more in a circle and no leaders in the room, bringing back that feminine connection that we have that, that there's a facilitator but there's not, you know, there's not that leader that you're supposed to learn from and disseminate all this knowledge, but that we are coming together as a collective to have these conversations, take what we need, but then have a chance to hear your voice as well. And I'm assuming that that, that fits for your round table as well, but that's how the, the circles work for me as well, in terms that it is really changing that conversation. And the more that we do that, the more we're changing the vibration of how we treat each other. Yeah. Yeah. And the structure of society, really. I love that because we're trying to to get from the person in front of the room, in front of the boardroom, in front of the classroom, in front of to say, this is the person you're supposed to listen to, sit there, take notes and disseminate all to we are the collectors of information to share with each other and, and give different thoughts to to the purpose, which is really going to change the dynamics, how we do things. So I, I love that we're talking about that in different ways, but like the same type of concept and, and the way that we're doing this. And I love the idea that it brings you back to your intuition then because then you get to partake in the conversation, you're not just disseminating information anymore. I think that's where the whole change is starting to come into place. Oh my gosh, we're on the same page and I'm just yeah. <laughs> vibing. That's what vibing is. Absolutely. And I've heard, I mean, like I heard a podcast this weekend or this week that talks specifically to that and the like infinity loop of, you know, the maternal in the, in the feminine and how as the patriarchal society, and I'm not man hating, but in the patriarchal society that we're in, women, really everyone has been forced to just output, output, output. And so Mm -hmm. if your energy is always going out, there's no ability to resource yourself and to come back to the loop of like, I don't have to have all the answers. I can lean on other people to be guides for me as well. And it just is something that is quite radical because our, our society is just not built that way. But Amber Hawkins, who I was listening to the Q and a from this mother wound summit, um, really just said that any society, there's an ind- indigenous um, thought that, uh, or belief that is any uh, society or culture that is built upon uh, a patriarchal model will eventually collapse on itself. And not to get into anything right now that is happening in our culture, in our world, it feels that way for a variety of reasons on both, on both sides. Yes. It feels like that there is this imminent collapse. And so, yeah, just really heeding to it starts in these women's circles. It starts in going back to your intuition. And so that is in and of itself, the ripple effect. I love how you say that eminent collapse and, and, and it, it does that, that word sounds so scary, but what I want to bring back to at this point, especially after you were saying that is what do we do about it? Well, what we do is we go into more women's circles. We go cr- create that ripple effect that you're talking about to, to change things. We, we, we go, we expand, we go share that information with our kids. And that's why this all about like finding out what is your genius and then inspiring that in your kids. So we're all living in our genius rather than that perpetual martyrdom, which brings us back to the emotional 
outlet that we came on to talk about that when we get stuck in that Mara dome, it's, it's, it's the weird, we're like, well, we got to give up our, our dreams for our kids so they can have their dreams. Well, then the same thing is going to happen when my daughter becomes a mom. Like it's this vicious cycle unless we, we break that right now. And I love that you're giving us techniques to how to actually do that. So what, what do you, um, before we um, run out of too much time, what do you suggest for moms to just get started with how to get back into themselves? What are some something that they should do today, tomorrow, or, or what would be something you would um, suggest for them? Yeah, I would say on like a, a, a micro level, a very nuanced, subtle level is just to start noticing more. I notice that I'm talking really fast right now. I notice that there's a sensation in my chest as I'm having this conversation with everything that we have to do this weekend and all the things that I'm asking of my partner. Um, I notice this like gut feeling that this person is not someone that I should go have coffee with next week. Just the noticing is really something that is really accessible to everyone. Um, for me personally, breathwork was absolutely a game changer. I am someone, like I said earlier, that runs a primarily rigid and then aggressive pattern. And in the rigid, I was very cut off from my heart and very cut off from my like intuition womb space. And so, because I was always in my head, it was always analyzing, planning, negotiating, you know, sifting around whatever it was. And I didn't know what it was like to feel anything really. I actually thought that like, but this is before like, um, any sort of like neurotypical or uh, divergent conversations were really happening. I thought that I was just void of empathy. And I think that if I had never done the work, I probably would start believing in myself that I was neurodivergent. And that is very not true. And I'm the only neurotypical person in my family. So I can speak to this um, with, with some ease and, and definitely understand the respect of it is that so many people are being labeled things based on potentially a trauma response or a stress response. And so yes. breath work for me really allowed me to drop out of my head and into my body, into my heart, because it was the first time that I let go of the control of my mind just enough to open the faucet for actual energy and emotions and feelings to come forth. Now, a lot of women are like, I don't want to do that. That sounds terrible. And I think a lot of people it's because they've spent their life in the resistance of that and they haven't ever watched the wave actually crash and then be able to settle out. Like we go to the beach, we see what that that cycle happens over and over and over again. Our emotions and our energetic system are very much the same way. But how people are viewing their emotions is through this lens of watching the, the wave rise and just as it crests, it's like, no, 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 no. And so you get this fragmented picture where you don't know what the other side is. Oh, the other side is fine. It literally falls. It pushes the water out and then it comes back in. And people don't know how resilient that they are. They're basing their resiliency on, I still hold a job. I still have a relationship. Like I haven't, you know, whatever it is. And so breath work really for a lot of people can um, downregulate their system if they are like very anxious, very amped, but it also can drive up a system that is in more of that uh, flop, um, fawn freeze response, mm -hmm. because we, you touched on this earlier of what I said of the variability and the flexibility. And I had a breathwork facilitator say in a training that, um, optimal wellness is purely just based on choice. So you can be in homeostasis, but sometimes our systems need a hyperactive state to get shit done to like, yeah. you know, really focus yeah. the plan, but it's in the choice where we can then go back to homeostasis or fall all the way into a hypo-regulated state where we are just more like a mush on the couch because we're restoring, we're resting. And those people that may tend to fall more into that flop state where they're just like collapsed, helpless, hopeless, breathwork also allows and empowers you to get back to the homeostasis or maybe even above that to where you're like, I could do anything. And it also allows you to tap into first and foremost, your intuition and those stories that have been running the show for who knows how long in your life. I, I totally agree with that. And actually that's one of the first thing I suggest is as soon as we got our technology back on before, I was like, well, let's take three deep breaths together. Let's yes. get back to our bodies and let's do this. So on that note, we'll be right back. Do you ever feel like your own dreams are fading on you as you focus and keep everything together for your family or have been buried under laundry and school runs and 
endless to do lists. They're so deep, you don't even know what they are anymore. The Mama Genius Hub is here to help you uncover that part of you again. Maybe you felt that pull to start a passion project, return to a hobby you once loved, or pursue a career that lights you up, but you're so caught in everyone else's needs that you keep slipping through the cracks. In just 15 minutes a day, our mini courses will help you reconnect with those dreams while finding a new rhythm in motherhood's beautiful, messy life. And best of all, you'll be doing it with community of moms who truly understand the juggle and the joy. The Mama Genius Hub is a community who've been there and are here to support and inspire each other every step of the way. It's time to rediscover your spark, live in your genius, and inspire your kids by showing them how to follow their own passions. Join the Mama Genius Hub today and start creating space for you again without feeling the genius get solo. Come to www.connectingmamas.com for more details. And we're back. So we're, we are running a little out of time, so we're going to ask you our final question today. Mm -hmm. Which is, what do you think is a, a common belief about motherhood that often prevents prevents moms from fully embracing their emotional needs? Um, actually, it might be a change. I have up. to do it all. I can just say it right now. I have to do it all. <laughs> What's the belief? I have to do it all. Full stop. That's the I belief. Love that. I just want to repeat that again. Like we have that a lot. I have to do it all. Mm -hmm. So what do we do to then shift that mindset a little bit? Why? I just asked the question, why? Who taught you that? I drop. <laughs> yeah. What are what are you? I mean, there's a very variable types of of questions from that. Of again, why? The, a really powerful one is that I ask a lot of clients is, what are you making that mean about yourself if you don't mm -hmm. do it all? Because that's getting to the limiting beliefs, which is getting to really the work that I do in unpacking mother and father learning of. How was this model to me and how am I relating to myself and others through this learning? Oh, I'm just taking that in right now. That's so true is when you ask those questions, you're really getting to the, to the root. And that's what we're trying to do when to eliminate some of these patterns and just to, to get out of autopilot is really we got to get to that root of everything. So tell everyone how they can get a hold of you and if you have a free gift for the audience. Yeah. So um, everybody always loves free stuff. I would love to hold space for any mama. Um, if you are happen to be, I'm in the Memphis area and you want to attend a group, uh, a, a group breathwork session, I almost said group virtual group breathwork session on me. Um, that's absolutely available to you. You can just message me on, um, Instagram In wow. I'm gonna take a pause <laughs> on Instagram. Um, uh, my handle is the somatic DPT. Uh, D as in David, P as in Paul, T as in Tom. Those are my credentials as a physical therapist. Um, if you're not in the Memphis area, you can definitely check me out um, on Instagram. And we also have those same breathwork circles um, virtually every month as well. I am, like I said, an inner child coach. I do one-on-one -on -one coaching. I will be launching a um, five-week women's group. Um, yep come mid to late February, 2025. So I would love to answer any questions if you want to connect with me on socials um, about that opportunity. But really it's it's about your first step. Um, I have so many free resources on my Instagram page, um, on my Linktree account. And I really, wherever you're at financially, energetically, emotionally, there is something out there for you because I believe that this work is for all moms, no matter what access that you have financially, socially, any of it. It's all there for you. I love that so much. So and so if the word breath work is just on your your head a little bit and it kind of hits you right here in the heart into your intuition a little bit, and you're like, hmm, I'm curious. Look Amanda up. And that's what this is about is if it hits you right there and you're like all of a sudden like, I wonder about that. Like that's yeah. that's the time to jump right in. And so we'll put Amanda backstage where I go through some of our takeaways from today. So what an amazing idea talk of just how do we get back into our bodies? How do we do those things? And so number one, take first takeaways, how do we support ourselves through that movement, through the autoplay, right? How do we take that away? And the first step she was saying to get rid of the autoplay is really to how do we start connecting with ourselves again and looking at that fight, flight, or um, or flight, fright, or flight. Now I'm tongue tied today. Um, and, and what is your tendency to respond? She was saying that hers was more to fight, mine was more to flight flight. And to really, once you start to acknowledge that, where are you going with that? Which leads us into number two, 
what is your personality? And looking at, could look at that book from Stephen Kessler, um, allowing your body. And then also the, the other book she recommended was how to your body keeps the score, which I also recommend again, all those layers that are in there, but we have the five parts of leaving, enduring, rigid, aggressive, and merging. And so part of motherhood, she was kind of explaining is that we go into that merging that we may or may not have had it before, but it brings us into that safety. All of a sudden you're asking, you're like, well, I'm doing, 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 but no one's doing for me. And I kind of relate that back to the Mardone idea of like, I got to give up my dreams for the kids, but then do we want our daughters to give up their dreams? So where do we draw the line on that? Which leads us into number three, which is, I'm, I'm re, I rewrote my notes real quick. Um, the patterns of noticing the stress and identifying it. And, and looking at it in terms of the story and then, but how do we detach from that story and not take on the emotions of the story, but to look at it and say, what is this actually happening? And how do we do that? And so it really is coming down to that pattern of the story and, and the way we talk to ourselves and things we say, and then that's when I seem to get so worked up. So how do we detach a little bit from that story to then say, is this, is this really something from mine? Is this something from my past or where is this even coming from? which leads us into number four, which is asking that question of just what do I notice? How am I feeling? How am I doing these things? So I can start to connect back to my own intuition. I can start to have those, um, say those, say that together and start listening to what's going on inside of me and what do I need to move forward? And we were both saying part of that um, moving forward, especially for us as women, is, is finding some sort of women's circle, round table, as she wrote, um, as Amanda put it, but to where we can start to connect and have a different take on how we share about ourselves. And then that leads me to number five, which I was actually never really thought about. And so I actually had remarked all my, my notes to put this for number five. But sometimes we put labels on people based on past trauma, which might not even have been given to them if they'd worked through that trauma, which she gave us a real story of herself sharing that. But I just never thought about it in those terms. And so before we start to label people, let's look at where those stories are coming from and what can we do with that first before we start to say, well, you're this, you're that. But how do we work together to really find the internal genius in each one of us? So welcome back to Sage, Amanda, and give us your final takeaway from today. Um, really, it's just about how important this work is in that you use it every day, all day, if you choose to. Again, going back to the tech issues, that was a small little blip in this day, but having the ability to just be with what is to let energy openly flow in and out of your system is really that's freedom. Like that's where contentment is birthed out of is being here and being okay with here instead of focusing on, I need to be there. I need to be that mom. I need mm -hmm. to react in that way. And having that resistance play out day to day of where you're not currently at, instead of just really giving yourself all of that loving permission to be exactly where you're at. So this is such a great discussion. I love that you're putting this out into the world and really just keep going, ladies. I love that so much. And on that note, I want to say how grateful I am that you didn't fight with the computer and I didn't say let's reschedule because we, we put things together and we got our done. And that's what we do as moms is we pivot and we do these things and not attach ourselves to those stories. So thank you so much, Amanda. And we'll see you all on the next episode. Bye, everyone. Bye. Thank you for joining us in today's episode of the Mama Genius Hub podcast. If you found value in our conversation, please share this episode with another mama who might benefit. Sharing helps us build a supportive community and reach out to more mamas like you. After all, it's more fun when we do motherhood together. Until next time, stay motivated and continue to pursue your dreams as you shine in your genius.